Hey folks, this is Ben Yessel. How's it going? I'm just making another video here tonight. Um, at least one more. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Hollywood in general and my my opinions of Hollywood throughout the course of my life and um, what I think of Hollywood now and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so... Um, like most other young boys, I thought movies were amazing when I was younger. And my parents only took me to movies, um, that were wholesome. And, um, I don't know, like, so only, I only knew... Before the age of 12, I was probably only um, mainly aware of of the good stuff that associated with Hollywood. So basically Disney and, you know, blockbuster family films and superheroes and that sort of thing. By the time I was in college, I had to growing awareness of how Hollywood was evil. Ev more evil than I probably realized. My parents always meant well. It, with everything everything regarding growing up, everything regarding how I grew up, my parents always meant the best. They always meant, they always wanted me to be not, they always wanted to protect me, I guess you could say. From any evils that existed in the world, and there's, I won't be naive. There's still a number, quite a number of evils that I've, I've sensed, or I've noticed, on some level, in some form in the world that I'm just not personally very aware of. But let me just, since maybe toward the end of college, and then since college, undergrad years, I'm just going to talk, a bit more frankly, if I can about and some, some of this was when I studied film scoring a little bit of this came through I'm just, I'm just going to try to be as, as forthright as it can be regarding um, what is actually happening in Hollywood in my understanding and even if I lived in Los Angeles, that wouldn't mean that I would know any more than I know now. I think I'd have to be um, a working actor like Mel Gibson. And you can look up things that Mel Gibson has talked about. And, you know, it, it's that, it's watching those interviews as well as so many other interviews. And there's so many other things that I think that are contributing to my knowledge of what's happening. That it is knowledge. It's not something that, it's not conjecture. I've already mentioned pedophilia with Corey Feldman and Elijah Wood and and um, some other folks have talked about this subject before. Keanu Reeves, that sort of thing. It's all out there on YouTube. It's, it's all out there if you guys want to look it up. Um, and it will become more and more public and out there as time goes on. And, the, you know, you, you don't want to be... You want to be a good person, but, you know... <sighs> You can't you can't hide sin forever. You cannot hide evil forever. It will come up. Things at some point everything will be known, everything will be public. And I do mean everything. I do mean everything. No evil will every evil will be exposed at some point. Everything. It's just a question of time. And if people that have done these really bad things die before that they're punished, they're, they'll be punished in the next life. It's not, it's like the, they have, they have the moment of glory and then it'll pass. That's basically what's going to happen. Just let that sink in for a bit. And we, you know, we, in our lives, so many of us are, I, I'll put it this way. I, I'm, I'm one of the first people that probably mentioned, I would love to be an actor. I don't think I have acting ability. But I would love to have that, um, you know, kind of big star life type thing. Sure. 
Who would? I mean, I'm, on some level, I would. But um, I know for a fact that there's many things I wouldn't like about it as well. But I would love to be... Um, everybody wants to be loved and everybody wants to be well thought of. That's, that's pretty much across the board. Loved and well thought of and understood. You know, these kinds of things. Nobody wants to have the paparazzi in their private life. Yeah, I think that's across the board as well. And everybody could use some extra money. And, you know, more... You know, all I think so many of us, are, you know, and we, it's easy to envy actors and envy these folks, but they're going to have, in this life, their time of... It's going to be great. And if they've done bad things, it's going to be bad in the next life for them. It's not going to be good. And they're going to have to fix things. They're going to have to try to repent however they can. If they can't, you know, I don't know. So, so, um, but th this all being said, um, so there's your, you know, B budget or B list, B list actors and your A list actors. And your B list actors are much more common in independent movies and all. all every independent movie, every one of them, with very few exceptions, are just regular people and regular directors. Be they have many different personalities and. Most everybody's not making tons of money, and so that's one. That's one thing, and, and that whole world, the whole world of it, world of independent movies, and um, and uh, you know, film convention. You know, <sighs> was it? Um, can't think of this off the top of my head. Well, all, all the all the uh, every so so many things associated with. Movies outside of L.A. You're basically talking about regular folks, more or less. Um, I'm just trying to think of that. Um, <sighs> I lost it. I'm sorry, folks. I'm drawing. I'm just drawing a blank right now. I'm tired. <laughs> so, so um, it's Robert Redford's at Park City oh, Sundance, the Sundance Film Festival, right? That's one of the places, among many other film festivals, where you'll you'll have a lot of independent directors and and actors and things, and hopefully there's some good ones, and you know you get some decent acting, kind of decent acting, sure. In Hollywood, you get the A-list more, right? And so with A-list actors and actresses, and these are the people we like to see the most. So, but part of this movie, part of this video, I'm going to get into this a little bit more about. Acting, and I, I have—I'm not an actor, right? But what, what's involved with acting? Where you're, you're taking on roles that aren't to your own personality. What does that do to a person? Well, where a person discovers, in my in my estimation, and we actually, even if we're even if we're not actors, we've had we've had to put on acts in our lives, on some form or another. In some, in some form or another, we've had to do that. Whether it's just not being teased. In your, when you're in elementary school or you're trying to get along with everybody not be seen as a loner in junior high or high school or just trying to put on a brave face and have a good day in college and things aren't going super socially well in college. Whatever it is, uh, or at work, you know, you put on a worker face and you, you if you're working in retail, you um, are trying to be really nice to customers and everything or trying to be really hardworking. And we put on all kinds of masks. We put on all kinds of facades you know, in our life. And so, in a way, all of us are kind of like actors, with very few exceptions, or with fewer exceptions. Um, this is something that we, we know about. We might not know about what it's like to, to act in an A-list or a big Hollywood movie, but we know how to act. And when, when people act so well that you believe what... The, the, the role that it, you know you are able to kind of just for a while you're watching a movie that's your world right and those actors that act like they're you know just they're, they're not that they're not acting they're acting like they're not acting right that level of actor or actress what do you what kind of impact do you think it has in their in that person's life to do that we think, oh, it's not a big deal. It's it's not it's not psychologically or spiritually a big deal. It just depends. 
spiritually, it's a little bit different situation than psychologically, in some, some respects. But um, there's, the, there's the suggestion that might pop in your psyche, be it from yourself or from an outside source, saying, oh, hey, you know what? You're so good at this. Why not try to get away doing this with this or that? Why not try to get away with doing that better? You know, it's it's um, if you're very good at manip it's manipulating people, right? If you're very good at manipulating people, putting on an act, you can fool people. You see what I'm, you see where I'm going with this? It's not something acting acting. Unless you're choosing roles that are wholesome and, and good for you spiritually. I mean, if you play a villain, I guess it depends on the type of villain you're talking about, but they're, they're, if you're playing a, we'll say, we'll use the word realistic, a, a realistic bad guy, not, not, a, not, a, not a superhero bad guy, not, a, not even other kinds of bad guys that are, fall short of, I mean, a, a realistic bad dude. And, and you're playing this really bad guy. And say a person's really playing a really bad guy in, in a film. You have to, and you put yourself in there. So I'm talking about worse than Joker. Far, far worse. Joker is teenage stuff. It's, it's not, it's, it, oh yeah, you have guns. You, know, you have these put on a clown face. I'm talking about really bad folks. Really bad folks. Like Jeffrey Dahmer or John Wayne Gacy. Or heck, even when Leonardo DiCaprio played that guy from, on The Wolf of Wall Street. Um, he might be a different kind of bad guy, but when you play more real... Guys that are more... Of a, it's, a, it's a realistic kind of bad guy. And so instead of just killing someone, they kill and rape someone. Or they rape someone and kill someone. Or, you know, many other things that we don't want to think about that are very, very evil, aside from just murder, right? Or in addition to murder. Imagine what happens to someone when they tell themselves and realize, oh, I'm actually really good at this. What, 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 what I mean, and then, I mean, of all people, Jack Nicholson would, know, would understand what I'm talking about. If you, if you ever watched this video or you heard about it, some people don't, they, some people are able to not pay attention to that voice in the back of their head saying, this or that or this or that. Or they're able to just psychologically come out okay. You know, having all their mar marbles, right? I would imagine that Jack, Jack Nicholson is one of those actors that's retained his sanity better than most, playing the kinds of roles he's played. And that, it was great that he played a Joker in a way that was more funny than super evil. But then again, um, in my opinion, sometimes the most frightening things about movies are, ne are not necessarily what you say, but it's, it's the visuals. And Nicholson happens to have a great face for playing scary individuals, right? So he knows that, right? But you can tell that he's not... You can tell that he wasn't... It wasn't like he was trying to be in this really super dark place when he played Joker. No, he played differently. But there are a lot of people... I mean, Al Pacino, when he, when he was playing Michael Corbillion in The Godfather... His role was ruthless in a way, but it wasn't purely evil. It was very understandable. You know, it had evil, there's an evil side to Michael Corleone, but, but he played also played the, devil's, the devil and the devil's advocate. He played Satan. How could Al Pacino play Satan himself in, in um, well, you know which movie I'm talking about. How could he do that and keep his sanity about him? Well, it's just, it's good. It's, it's like, it's, it's all the things that happen psychologically and subconsciously outside of the camera. So a lot of actors are trying to get into their roles. That's fine. They're trying to, whatever. But there's a point at which it's dangerous to go past in order for someone to keep someone's well-being. When I worked at a music store, I, you know, it doesn't matter which one it was. When I worked at a music store a while back, quite a while back, and uh, was always listening to, wasn't my choice, very rough music. I mean, I mean, it was not, it, it, for years, for a long time, well, for a long time, listening to this kind of stuff. Not music I would normally listen to. It had an effect on me. I didn't like it at all. 
Um, imagine working in a grocery store. And even the background music in a grocery store, it's, it's pleasant, right? It's nice. That music has an effect on you over time. You start humming it to yourself when you're working in the back room. As a retail worker, as a helper clerk, or whatever. Um, every, every, you know, every aspect of your work, or what you're, whatever you're doing, that, that you know, you're putting a lot of time in and effort in, it has affected you over time. So you need to be very aware of the nature of your work. And as an actor, actress, film director, there's a certain there's a certain environment to that. My parents have always felt like there's a very it's 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 not a very healthy environment. It's not a very it's not a very righteous environment in L.A. It goes without saying we can see on some level how evil that can be. But of course, nobody, none of the executives want any of that stuff to be noticed. They want people, they want the America to love their movies. Of course. They don't want any of the, the worldly bad stuff that's going on to, to not, none of it to be known. They don't even want their affairs, they don't want their affairs necessarily to be known. If, if it slips out, it slips out, it slips out, right? But there's so many things going on that we just still don't know about. And what are those things that are going on that we don't know about in Hollywood? I can guarantee you that much of what we're talking about is sexual in nature. So I, I just rather not talk about it. But it's not just that. It's drugs, right? It's mind programming. We, if we want to get into the Illuminati, train of thought, the, the Illuminati. And it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's not, not only programming toward actors and actresses by people even above the studio execs. But it's it's some kind of mind control and programming in a way that's even affecting people that watch movies and TV. And the only way to get out of that is to not be in the habit of watching that stuff. If anyone's in the habit of watching a TV show or, or a movie, well, not movies, the movies are going to be a little different, but TV shows, TV shows, oh my gosh. So, that's associated with Hollywood, of course, as well. Do you know what kind of you know? I, I'm just gonna, from my own from from my own life. It, it started in the '90s, as far as I can remember, with The Simpsons. I noticed certain behaviors against Monk Monk peers that were influenced by The Simpsons somewhat, on some level. When I was younger, it wasn't it wasn't especially wholesome, but it wasn't still wasn't that bad yet. But there are other things. Any any TV show that was animated or whether it was you know, live action action. In Seinfeld, when when you people have, yeah, people that try to imitate people on TV shows when you're younger, that's funny and everything. That's whatever, that's great. What the real the real dark how can I put this the darker thing that I'm trying to explain here. It's something that's very not um, loving. My, my family growing up, I had a great family. I have the greatest parents in the world, the greatest family in the world. All my siblings are amazing. My family has been one of my main, probably my, one of my primary course sources of strength in my life. Um, my church as well. And then there's some other things that really bring me a lot of strength and emotional strength and spiritual strength in my life. One of the things that seemed to always detract somewhat from that, uh, on some level, or it just seemed to kind of not always, it wasn't always the sort of thing that meshed well with my family. It was the culture of well, TV, TV shows on some level. But when in the 80s and 90s, there was only so little, it was only so much of it that we really saw. There's only so much that we can really observe and make sense of. When you see movies, you're kind of wowed by it all, especially when you're a little boy. Um, it's with time that you come to understand this stuff better. TV shows, there are a lot of things going on with the TV shows I had no clue about. I had no clue. The culture was like and everything. Everyone thought Steve Urkel in Family Matters was this geeky black guy because that's the guy, that's the role he played. That's the role he played. Uh, Jamal, I can't remember his last name. In real life, he's a very different kind of guy. He's very cool, very nice, but 
much much more suave and everything. And you played that played you played that suave character at one point toward the end of the later on. You know, I and people when we get to the, these habits of watching TV shows, I don't know. I don't know if you know. Some people get some people when I, when I was younger, you know, in college, at some point. Some people got into not only Seinfeld but like King of Queens and stuff. And I remember, I remember this stuff. I never got into the habit of watching this stuff myself. But you, if you get into this habit of watching a TV show or TV shows, and folks, my landlord is is like this. But it's a different situation because the shows my landlord watches tend to be a little bit better. They're, they're different. He watches game shows. He doesn't watch TV shows. So it's a little different situation, I suppose. But. But it's it's if you watch TV shows relig- religiously, it's a p- kind of programming. I, I'm I'm not going to mince words here. It's a kind of programming. It programs you to some extent. Or another, when I was younger, I was programmed. On some on some level, I was because it was a recurring thing every single day or every single weekday, and it was always on a certain time, and it was part of your daily routine. I remember in junior high and high school, I you know, got up early, did paper out, breakfast, school, classes, all at the same time every day, come home, do practicing on the piano, do horn, French horn you do, homework maybe, whatever you're doing, spending some time with friends some days, and then you have dinner and you watch TV, or you watch TV and dinner, whatever it is, whatever it is you do. You always know if those TV shows are on at certain times. Your parents still have to say as to whether or not you're going to watch that TV show or not, right? That's how it was when I was growing up. In my family, that's how it was. And this is this was Hollywood. We've had we have so much more choices now. So many things that are not as Hollywood oriented, but much of this material doesn't have as great of acting. It's true, but at least you don't have to worry about all this programming. It's rumored to be happening on some level, and and, and again, I'm going to go back to. Sorry, folks, I have a little bit of a canker sore in my tongue, so it's. You, it, there's the there's the impact that all this stuff has on the actors and actresses, and the wor- the worldly the, the impact on them in terms of making these people more worldly, and and talking with and associating with all these people, that it's first you're starstruck and then you're like. You know, actors and actresses, and then, and then, like, if you get as you become part of this club, and you move up the chain of command, and you sacrifice, you make it, you know, whatever you do, it, it's a, it has a negative impact on someone spiritually, unless you're very smart about it, and you only associate mainly with people that are good people. You try to stay away from the, the scum, right? In Hollywood, I, all you guys have to look up, just look up um, Ricky Schroeder. We talked about with this stuff, but there's all kinds of other people you can talk about this stuff. I mean, Crispin Glover's probably talked about this stuff on some of it too. I mean, this is just this is a drop in the bucket. Mel Gibson as well. Um, I, even heck, even um, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> I mean, I mean, and Robert Redford. He's done a lot of movies, and he he is big time involved with Sundance Film Festival. What do you think Robert Redford is wanting? Do you think do you think you guys think that Robert Redford wants people, young people are trying to get involved in acting and it's hard to make it get get your big break? Do you think he wants those pe- people that come to Hollywood that are good people, decent people, young men and women? Do you think he wants them to be come corrupted by these big No, no one wants that. But Robert Redford understands that some you know, he does. If anyone understands that, it's him. It's him. Now, there are things that probably have always gone on on Hollywood, sexual things especially, but I, I bet you, that, you know, I, it's no exaggeration that things have gotten worse. And so much of that, we just, so much of this we never see. And it's, it's power and power corrupts. It's the same thing with government, it's the same thing with Hollywood. And um, it, again, it has to do with appearances, it has to do with sex appeal. And it has to do with the nature of the of work. When you, if you work, let's say you're a public school teacher, and you go to your classroom and you have your office, 
or whatever. Maybe you don't have an office. Whatever it is, you have your classroom you work in. And you're with your kids or whatever. And you, you're, you're doing your stuff. You, you teach. You grade your papers. Whatever. You know, there's, there's, this is the nature of a public school teacher. And you have to deal with discipline. And you deal with meetings, administration, and that sort of thing. And, you know, school unions. And that's, that's, that's the lifestyle of a public school teacher. At no point, you know, I mean, it's, it's extremely, it's, 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 it's unfathomably different um, to go from that kind of world to being an actor or actress. I mean, even if you're an office worker, if you're an office worker, even, even involving all the office, you know, bromances and things and all that stuff, all the pop, the power, the pol political, whatever, you know, all the sucking up and that sort of thing, brown nosing and all, all, all kinds of stuff like that. Do you, do you guys think that, the, that there's any, you know, unless you're talking about uh, maybe a small percentage of what's happening in the office, you know, business world, do you guys think that that kind of lifestyle has any kind of connection, any kind of connection in a way to the way that things are in Hollywood? No. In Hollywood, you get sets, you have rooms, you know, actress, act actors, you know, trailers and things and on set. Um, you got a lot of stuff going on that is just, it's just mind blowing, blowing. It's just so much different. So much different in Hollywood than, than everything else. Government is similar. I mean, in government, let's be honest, gov political leaders, unless the, the legislature or judicial, if they're, if they're executive, if they're the president, if they're, if they're certain offices, it's going to be more about the show. It's going to be more about putting on a certain mask for the public. You know? And it's going to be the parties. It's going to be the evil stuff. And it's going to be sex and all that stuff. And it's the same deal. And it's the same organization that's running both Hollywood and the government. The Illuminati, right? So, what do I think of Hollywood? And all the stuff, I mentioned stuff and stuff recently about Feldman, yes. It's, it's unwholesome. There are good people that are in the industry, even in LA, yes. Um, now, if I watch a movie these days, it's just, it's just like as I mentioned before, it's so many stinky movies so you know I might see one movie a year now with an A-list actor that's a that's a big budget movie maybe one or two I'd be surprised if it's more than that I'd be, or it's usually like something I've already seen before because it's just there's a lot of like, stinky movies now right but um, I still wonder sometimes what's happening but it's weird because so many of us, we get invested in movies, right? We get invested in characters that are being played. But let's be honest here. These are characters. They're not real people. But these are great movies and they're great, amazing actors and actresses. So we get really invested in this stuff. Can you imagine the kind of the, the person? And there are people like this. I have to be very careful how I say this. But there are people that spend their entire lives being just um, consumed with what's happening in Hollywood. And these are great people. These are fine people. These are people that just for whatever reason are obsessed with Hollywood. On some level, maybe maybe 0.02%, some small part of me is interested in what's happening there. Because sure, I, I, you know, just like you guys, I, I'm curious what's happening. with Because these are, these are folks we all know about. You know, we've seen their movies, we've seen those TV shows. We're aware of the lonesome level. And every actor and actress conveys some part of their humanity in what they're doing. And we know they're not as evil or they're not like this other character that they have to get in their roles. We understand all that. But it has a toll. Acting, acting has a toll, a spiritual and emotional toll on anyone who I think does it. In my opinion. It's a, especially a psychological toll. We can't ignore that. We can we can hate actors and actresses, but that let's be honest. I, we don't want that to be permanent, for the most part, 
right? But it's, it's, it takes a toll. And the toll is, and you guys fill the blanks here, but I don't think any of us want that. We could all use more money. We could all use more love. We could all use more everybody thinks awesomely of me. I'm sure we could all use more of that. And I think that's very healthy to want these things. But I just don't think, you know, no, I, there's, there's good in Hollywood, but it's still very overshadowed by evil and it needs to change. And one of the ways that it can change is by supporting not only more independent movies and more highly skilled actors and actresses going into independent stuff, but more exposure of what's happening in Hollywood and more of an overthrow of the, of the system. The way things have been. We don't want to we don't want to give money to these people that are evil. Not necessarily the actors and actresses, not necessarily most of them, but the people that are already running, running the show. Right. Alright, leave, leave a touch of comments below. Catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.